Auspicious greetings to all Dhamma friends around the world. Thank you for tuning in to a new series of Fogongshan English Dhamma Services. My name is Miao Zhang from Fogongshan Shifang Temple, San Diego, California. Thank you for joining me again for the second session in the pursuit of 10 paths to happiness. In the last session, we learned the ways on how not to give rise to anger when dealing with unwholesome friends, tranquilly abide with great loving kindness, taking deep joy in the true Dharma, and making Buddha images as the four methods suggested by the Buddha in attaining elegant and proper form. Today, I will continue to share the Buddha's wisdom on how to have perfect wealth and maintaining harmony in our society as the second and third path to happiness. In the Sutra, Sumati asks, How is a life of perfect wealth attained? The Buddha said, Sumati, Bodhisattvas use four methods to obtain wealth and nobility. What are the four? First, give timely gifts. Second, give without a contempt or arrogance. Third, give joyfully. Fourth, give with no expectation of reward. Wealth is something that most of us would like to have and it is concerning with the success of this life. And yet, many people thought that Buddhists should not pursue wealth and should only be concerned with enlightenment. Is that true? Well, the sutra actually discusses both worldly and supermundane wealth and needs. Not only that, we need to have the right understanding that dukkha or unsatisfactoriness arises is not because of wealth, but because of our endless greed and craving to have more. In the Sutra, the Buddha guides us in understanding the causes, conditions, and effects in obtaining wealth. Most of us find it hard to earn a living, and some cannot help but complain about others who are better off with resources and things seems to come easily. Why can they have these things? Where do all these good conditions and effects come from? All the good conditions and rewards don't just come like that, nor can it forcibly taken or through wishful praying. Of course, the Buddha wants us to understand the causes we had created in order to embrace the effects. So, the questions to ask ourselves, have we sowed the seeds of rewards and blessings? If we haven't sown the seeds, what will we harvest? Do we cultivate wholesome affinities and connections with others? If not, how would we expect something out of nothing? There's, there's a Buddhist saying, when one gives, one will receive. Or in other words, what we sow is what we reap. If we cultivate the wholesome causes of giving and sharing, eventually, when the conditions are ready, one will receive the wholesome effects. Therefore, in the second path to happiness, the Buddha shared with us the four methods of giving timely gifts, give without contempt or arrogance, giving joyfully, and giving without expectation of reward. Now, what is giving? Giving is the most wonderful action in making affinities with others, and timeliness in giving is crucial in making sure that things or help is given at the right time. Venerable Master said, the greatest wealth in the world is understanding how to give to others. The greatest poverty is greedily coveting what others have. When it comes to giving, one not only give wealth, speaking wholesome words, expressing gratitude, and serving others are all ways to give. 
the Buddhist concept of giving also include sharing of the Dharma and giving fearlessness. We might be familiar with giving wealth, that is to offer physical support to others. However, not many people know the other two types of giving, sharing of Dharma and giving fearlessness. Sharing of Dharma is referring to using knowledge, skills, and truth to help others. Giving fearlessness is to let others feel safe with righteous acts, eliminating cruelty and ensuring peace in society, and offering spiritual comfort to all sentient beings. Taking a look at the timeliness in giving and sharing, it sets our compassion in action. The Buddha taught us to care for the now. Once we set our intention, we should put our plans into action. We'll be more mindful and observant of everyone around us. When we see someone being scolded, take the initiative, comfort and encourage one promptly. There was one time when a devotee by the name of John was on the way to the Coronado Island. Halfway driving through the bridge, he saw a lady standing by the side and staring blankly to the ocean. He immediately stopped the car without any hesitation. Getting off the car, he walked towards the lady and started to talk to her. He realized that she was thinking of committing suicide. John did not show any signs of panic but continued to talk to her, sharing with her stories on how Venerable Master overcoming all difficulties in his life. There are no good or bad happenings in life, but it is a way for us to gain more experiences in life and to grow stronger from each encounter. They talked for almost an hour. After learning and hearing what John said, as if the light bulb in his mind just lit. She then understood the importance of life, and there's always hope for changes. She eventually dropped the idea of ending her life. John's timely giving and compassion in action saved her life. Timely giving saves us from regrets in life too. Imagine if he were to just drive by, what would have happened to this lady? Do we have similar experiences in life? Thus, give, timely gift is one of the perfect wealth in life. How do we give? The Buddha shared with us when we give, we should give without contempt or arrogance, giving joyfully and giving with no expectation of reward. Sometimes it is easy to give, but to do so without any attachment to the eye might not be that easy. So we need to remember how we give. Venerable Master said, generosity is not about how much is given, but instead on the sincerity of the intention. When we give, we should not obsess over matters such as having versus lacking, rich versus poor, or superior versus inferior. When we receive, we should be grateful and appreciative. Just like the story that Venerable Master once shared about a lady named Mila, who was homeless and back for a living. One day, Mila went begging for food. As she walked past a temple, a Dharma service was ongoing. She saw many people making all kinds of offerings and inspired her to offer too. However, she felt disappointed as she did not have anything to offer. While she was feeling bad, she put her hand in her pocket to her surprise, she found something, a penny. 
happily, she walked into the temple. Standing in front of the Buddha, she kneeled and prayed. When she was finished, she took out her only penny and dropped it into the donation box. As Mila was leaving the shrine, a monk stopped her and said, "Excuse me, could you please wait? Our abbot would like to meet you." To Mila's surprise, the abbot prayed for her and her family personally. Equally touched and baffled, Mila said to the abbot, "Thank you so much. You didn't have to do all that for me." I'm just a beggar with nothing," the abbot replied. "You gave everything you had. I see before me a sincere person with a good heart." Mila left the temple, feeling grateful and fulfilled. From that day on, though she continued to be a beggar, she felt different, more at peace with herself. A few months later. The whole nation was in mourning, as the queen had passed away. The king was inconsolable, and the royal ministers suggested an outing to ease his sadness. When they were in the forest, from afar they saw a beam of light shining on a tree. As they got closer, they discovered that the light shone on Mila. Who was sitting in meditation? Despite her ragged appearance, beauty flowed from her. When the king heard about Mila, he decided to bring her back to the palace and gave her lodgings. Feeling very grateful, Mila would spend her time comforting the king with stories. As the months passed, the king fell in love with her. And decided to marry her, and crowned her as the queen. After becoming the queen, Mila was reflecting on her life's journey. She suddenly remembered her offering to the temple. The next day, she proposed to the king that she would go and make an offering to the temple. She took ten wagons of offerings to the temple. She was waiting for the abbot to come and pray for her, but to her surprise, she was greeted by another monk. She was irritated. Then the humble monk said, "I'm very sorry, Your Majesty. Our abbot would like me to send you this message. In the past, you were a beggar. A penny was all you had." You offered it with great sincerity. That kind of offering is worth more than anything. However, today, even though you came with ten wagons of offerings, you have also brought along your arrogance. Venerable Master concluded in this story with a verse: "Contented people are rich, greedy people are poor." Those who help are noble; those who desire much are degraded. Therefore, when we give, we learn to give and share with sincerity. We should not give with arrogance, nor with the desire that others remember and repay us. This is perfection in giving. On the third path to happiness in maintaining harmony in the family, the Buddha said. Samadhi. Bodhisattvas use four methods to keep their families from destruction. What are the four? First, skillfully abandon divisive language. Second, persuade sentient beings marred by the wrong view to abide in the right view. Third, protect and ensure the continuation of the true Dharma. Fourth. Teach all sentient beings to attain Buddhahood. Family is built on respect, trust, and love. The people closest to us in the world are our family members. Family members are always our support, and often a haven to talk about one's successes, 
setbacks, gains, and losses. The wider concept of family is not limited to people with blood relationship, but can be extended well into the community. However, we all have differences and personalities. How do we maintain connected and harmony? We should skillfully abandon divisive language. What is divisive language? There are the words that are said in a two-faced and judgmental way. Sometimes, we might come across people who try to drive a wedge between others and instigate conflict between groups of friends, spreading vicious rumors on both sides. We should avoid doing so at all costs. There was a story about Rahula, a young disciple and the son of the Buddha, was speaking a divisive language to those who would like to pay respect to the Buddha. If the Buddha was in the East, he would have told others the Buddha was in the West and vice versa. People would be going to the wrong direction and cannot find the Buddha. Eventually, the Buddha knew about that and disciplined him, saying, whenever you want to perform a verbal act, you should reflect on it. This verbal act I want to perform, would it lead to self-affliction, to the affliction of others, or to both? Is it an unskillful verbal act? with painful consequences, painful results? If on reflection, you know that it would lead to self-afflictions, to the affliction of others, or to both, it would be unskillful verbal act with painful consequences, painful results, then any verbal act of that sort is absolutely unfit for you to do so. If we cannot control our mouth, how would we be able to control our mind? So, there are five conditions to contemplate before speaking. Do I speak at the right time or not? Do I speak all facts or not? Do I speak gently or harshly? Do I speak beneficial words or not? Do I speak with a kind heart or inwardly malicious? When we can contemplate the above, our words are not only true, comforting, magnanimous, also carefully said and with wisdom, then harmony in families will not be impossible. Another method in maintaining harmony is to have the right view. With right view, we can see the world correctly and have a proper understanding of causes and conditions in all matters in life. We will see the cause and effect of everything that comes together and fall apart. Without the right view, people will lack reasoning and often blame others whenever there are obstacles in life. They often confuse right and wrong and arrogantly believe they are right. The Buddha once said, In a person's wrong view, wrong thought comes into being. In a person's wrong thought, wrong speech. In a person's wrong speech, wrong action. In a person's wrong action, wrong livelihood. In a person's wrong livelihood, wrong effort. In a person's wrong effort, wrong mindfulness. In a person's wrong mindfulness, wrong concentration. In a person's wrong concentration, wrong knowledge. In a person's wrong knowledge, wrong release. This is how from wrongness comes a failure, not a success. If everyone in our family can engage in the right thoughts, having the right beliefs, and get along with all other family members and friends, then that household will be in harmony. The society will be without conflicts and the world will be at peace. Don't we think that having the right view and the true Dharma is crucial? To end today's session, to have perfect wealth, 
Let us give and share with others promptly, and without arrogance. To maintain harmony, let us abandon the divisive language and have the right views. Next week, we will be discussing on the fourth and fifth path to happiness, on how to be born in the presence of the Buddha, and traveling freely without obstructions in mind. If you are interested in reading more on the ten paths to happiness. You may get a copy from our Buddha's Lights publications. Let us conclude this lecture by joining our palms and dedicating the merits from this session to our family, our friends, our society, and all beings. Last but not least, thank you for joining us in today's session. If you find this lecture series helpful to your practice. Please subscribe to the Foguangsheng English Dharma Services YouTube channel and share it with your friends. See you next week on Mitofu.